go win, as it were, go into the nucleus, and then there's a reprogramming process where the male and female nuclei have their genes uh, set aside to be turned on and off for early development. Here you see early cleavage stages occurring, and this is one of the early growth phases. As the embryo moves down the fallopian tube, it's going to form an important stage called the blastocyst here in a few seconds. Of course, in real life, that takes days, about five days. At this stage, then, I'd like to draw your attention to the inside of the blastocyst, where there are cells called the inner cell mass, which I'll be abbreviating as ICM. Those are the cells that make the entire animal. And the outer cells give rise to the placenta and other supporting tissues. At this stage, the embryo implants into the wall of the uterus. This is when a pregnancy is really initiated. And now we'll see those blue inner cell mass cells form a disc. And then as the cells continue to grow, they change their physical positions, their kind of geographical relationship to one another. And you'll see that represented here as this disc gets transformed into an embryo. Those lines represent sites where cells are migrating in and out. And here's an important stage when the three beginning layers of the embryo, the so-called germ layers, are formed. And I'll come back to that in a few minutes. As development proceeds, there's more growth and movement of cells. It'll begin to form a neural tube. Here it turns, and appendages start to bud out. You see the head forming and the eye. And then eventually, we get a small embryo. And some months later, of course, this would be born as a young baby. Now, what you saw there is both the complicated movements and the uh, the growth of the embryo. And I want to focus in a bit on these early stages of the formation of the germ layers, as they're called, the first signs when cells are being told what they will become. As you saw in that picture, there were three germ layers. I'm not exactly sure how to explain or describe why they're called germ layers, but they're germ in the sense that these were, are like buds or something that will develop into something new as the animal proceeds. We can think of them as the, sort of the primary colors. They're not drawn here as primary colors, as red, blue, and yellow, but rather as blue, green, and yellow. And you can think of them as the subset or this, the sort of a substratum which is used to make the animal. And one point I'd like to emphasize then is that the outer layer, the blue layer, the ectoderm, is going to give rise to the whole nervous system and the skin. The inner middle layer, called the mesoderm, will make the bone, blood, and muscle, like the heart muscle or the skeletal muscle, et cetera. And I'll spend a fair amount of time talking about the third layer, the endoderm, which makes the gut tube, running from the mouth to the anus. And what is formed from the gut tube are the lung, the liver, the pancreas, the stomach, the intestine, et cetera. And in the next movie, I'll show you to emphasize this point. You'll see that at the end, we begin to focus in on the development of the pancreas as one example. If I could have the next animation, please. So here we're going to go through quickly the early stages of development again. And then we're going to get to this stage when the germ layers are set aside, the three germ layers, the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. So here you'll see then that the inner cell mass gives rise to the entire adult animal, in this case, a human. The same process would occur in a mouse, as we'll see a bit later. If we now look at the embryo after the three germ layers have formed, this video will highlight what comes from the blue germ layer, the ectoderm. You'll see that it makes the nervous system, including the brain, and the skin. The middle part, the mesoderm, green here, gives rise to the muscle, including the kidneys, the heart. And the endoderm gives rise to the whole gut tube. There you see the lung, the liver, the intestine. And to give one more detailed of example of this, let's think about the development of the endoderm, and in this case, the formation of the pancreas. So there's the pancreatic bud, which comes out of the endodermal derivative. 
Now I'm going to talk to you a bit today about the pancreas as one example of how an organ and then the cell types within that organ get made. And in order to do that, I have to remind you a bit about what the pancreas does. I doubt any of you would say that the pancreas is one of your favorite organs or that you even think much about it. But I'll remind you that when you had breakfast this morning, you did that to gain nourishment. And you couldn't do that without the important role of the pancreas. So where is the pancreas and what does it do? Let's have a look here at our little human model. And the pancreas is a banana-sized organ found right next to your stomach and your intestines. So I'm going to remove this stomach here from this little fellow. And you can see this white organ here, which is the pancreas. As I said, it's about the size of a banana. And in the next slide, I show a picture of what it looks like that's here. So you can see it's nestled in next to the top part of the intestine. And the reason is that it serves its physiological function related to the digestion and the use of food. That purple line there is a duct into which are secreted all the enzymes that the pancreas makes that allow your intestine to digest the food that you've eaten. And we can see that in a bit more detail here as to what at the cellular level of this tissue or organ is involved in digestion. You can see here a cell called an exocrine cell which is the cell that makes these enzymes, they're secreted then into that inner tube that flow into the intestine to digest food, as I've said. There's a blood vessel right next to the endocrine function of the, this organ, the endocrine component, which is called an islet, standing for island. And I want to look a little more detail at this pancreatic islet, because within it, it has just four kinds of cells. And an important one that I'm going to use an example, as an example of cell differentiation, is called the beta cell, shown in yellow at top. And the beta cell makes the hormone insulin, which many of you will have heard of. The other three cell types make different hormones, like glucagon and somatostat. Now I want to show you a real life picture of this, which is actually a stained picture of an islet, uh, which, which is done with a microscope that measures the fluorescence of the stain, called a confocal microscope. And so while that cartoon there gives you an idea of what it looks like, in real life, an islet looks like this. In this case, the colors are a little different. The insulin-producing cells are in blue. Now, why am I so obsessed with this pancreatic islet? Why have I chosen this as an example? I could have, of course, chosen any example, a cell in your eye, a cell in your heart, a muscle cell, or a blood cell as an example of differentiation. But one of the important reasons I've chosen this one is that the production of insulin is very important in order for your body to make use of the food you eat. And once the sugar enters your blood, once your food is digested into sugar and it's flowing through the bloodstream, the islet measures the amount of sugar in the blood and then secretes this hormone, insulin, in order for the rest of your cells to take up sugar and use it. Without insulin, one doesn't survive. And there are two diseases related to insulin and sugar, sugar utilization. They're both called diabetes, type 1 and type 2 diabetes. And I'll say a bit more about those today and tomorrow. But for now, I want to make the point that the pancreas is very important in terms of thinking about medical problems like diabetes in addition to understanding normal development. So let's talk a bit about normal development here. That is, how does the body make a cell type like this? As I've already said, this doesn't just happen like magic, going from a completely unspecialized cell in order to a fully specialized pancreatic beta cell, but it's rather a stepwise process. And in this slide here, we can see some of the steps involved in that process. You'll remember in the early development, I showed a stage called the blastocyst, inside of which there was the blue cells of the inner cell mass. So one of those is depicted here up at the top, ICM. And that cell then makes decisions about becoming, or some of its daughter cells make decisions to first become endoderm, then a pancreatic bud cell, then an endocrine cell, which is the islet component. And then finally, within the islet, it's going to be a beta cell or some other type of cell as shown here. Now, in order to really understand this process, we need to know what's going on at each of these steps. And as you will appreciate, this involves turning genes on and off which make your cells different. The reasons your lens cells of your eye, for example, aren't like a pancreatic beta cell is because the cells in the eye express lens crystalline, and a pancreatic beta cell 
express, expresses insulin.